In this scene, we'll be exploring the Exposure Effects display options. We'll learn how to display all the different channels and when best to use them. We'll see how the display is made up of slices to give a smooth volume in the viewport. We'll use trail display to visualize fluid flow. Finally, we'll use color and opacity controls to customize the look of our fluid. Okay, so here we have a really simple exposure effect scene. It's going to help us to demonstrate the importance of the display parameters within exposure effects. So I'm going to hit play and see what's going on here. And you can see we have this tumbling torus and it's a source for some fuel. It's also a source for some heat. And those two channels combined is resulting in a burn. It's burning and producing our smoke. And of course, we can see that smoke and that fuel within our simulation here. So I'm going to hit pause. And I'm going to move the camera around. And as you can see, it's a volumetric display, of course. It's data within those voxels displaying. If I go to our display tab, we can view which channels that uh, are, are being solved for. So currently we know that we have fuel and smoke. That's the default. We also have temperature. Now that's being added from this tag. We have heat being added and then the resulting temperatures are displayed like so. This is also a smooth interpolated display similar to smoke and fuel. And we'll come back to that in a second. And we have the individual smoke and fuel channels so we can just view one at a time. Now the importance of that is that you, you might be just simulating smoke alone, you might just be smoke, uh, simulating fuel, and therefore you might just want to display those individually. However, really useful is when you have both of them showing at the same time and you are at an angle or a, there's a simulation where the smoke is occluding the fuel. So I can't see the fuel at the moment, so I'm going to go to the fuel display and you'll see we're now being able to see the fuel without the smoke occluding it. So that's handy in simulations where you might have some heavy fire inside a smoky simulation and you just want to see it and see what it looks like. There we go. Uh, then we have velocity. Now velocity is a grid display mode. Instead of being an interpolated smooth display, we're actually seeing a point inside each voxel that contains velocity. And from that point is a line. It's a velocity vector. And off that line, we know the direction of the flow of the fluid. It's going to advect stuff in this direction. The velocity is going to move stuff in that direction. And then the length, the magnitude of that vector is the speed at which the, the fluid is being advected. So the color is also representative of that speed. So we can see here that the color green is the slowest and red is the fastest. We'll come back to color control in a bit. The next display is speed. Now this is Unlike velocity, this is an interpolated slice display and it's volumetric. And this is similar to velocity, but instead of having a direction, it is just the speed. We are seeing where the speed is in our simulation, uh, green being the slowest, red being the fastest. And that's handy just to get an idea of where the fastest parts of your simulation are, but not the direction of the flow. There's one last one here called color. Now, color is important if you are adding color to your simulation. You'll see there's nothing displaying now because we are not solving color at the, at the moment. And just to demonstrate that, let's go to our Exposure Effects tag. And you'll see we're getting our color from our object. I'm going to change that to just Custom. Let's leave it on yellow for now. Go back to the Exposure Effects object, Solve a tab, make sure the channel color is active. Now when I hit play, we have color. So it's not on by default, but if you need to review it, you can just activate it based on those channels. So I'm just going to turn that back off because it's unnecessary for our simulation here. Go back to our fuel and smoke display and let's take a look at actually what is occurring for us to be able to see these things in our viewport. So our display is currently set to OpenGL. Now there's a couple of display modes, OpenGL and slices, and they rely on essentially a slice being cut through our simulation at different points. So from the camera, away from the camera, wherever a plane intersects, these slices intersect our simulation. So they come into uh, contact with a piece, uh, some property inside a voxel, it will display that on that slice. So essentially, if I change this to center slice, you'll see we only have one of these, I'll increase the resolution, but I can actually um, you can see that slice, that center slice is in the center. And as I rotate round, it's a plane 
like so. Now, obviously, just having one slice is not representative of the volume. So we need to repeatedly create slices throughout our volume, go back to OpenGL display. And that's what this slices parameter here is allowing us to do. It's taking, it's sampling our simulation and we can reduce them all the way down to, to just a few. And you can see it's doing the same as the center slice, but having the combination of lots of them. And you can see I can go right up to 1024 and it, you get a much smoother display. So if you have a really high res simulation, you might require more slices to, to view those. Now the default of 256 is pretty good for most scenarios. So we can leave it at that for now. Now we also have a global transparency. So we can increase the full transparency of those slices all the way down to zero. And then we actually have individual transparencies for some of the, the channels, so fuel color and smoke color. We'll come back to those in a second. Let's just finish up our look at these parameters at the top here. Of course, we've probably seen before, we have the grid displays, we have bounds, voxels. Uh, being able to view the voxel size is really important in a lot of simulations, but we can also have that at none, so it cleans up our display nicely. We can also have the adaptive bounds on or off. We can change the color. So you can see our bounds. If you want to customize that, that's no problem. Now, I like to have them off sometimes, just to have a nice clean display like so. Now, interpolate, as I said earlier, we had grid display modes and we had slice display modes. Now, the grids, the sorry, the slices, they actually are smoothed out. They are interpolated to give us a nice smooth display of our simulation. And this is how fluid simulations work. And often when they are rendered, they are being interpolated. Those voxels, so we don't see a pixelated image, much like a bicubic sampling of a of a, of a uh, pixelated image, it's trying to smooth out the simulation and give us a smooth display. And it's very effective, of course. So that's generally left on, but that's a, if, if you turn it off, you get a good representation of your, your, your um, voxels. Okay, so we actually have this collapsed area called trail display. Now, if I expand this, this is a way of representing our velocity again. And if we go to display trails, you can see this is a great way to see our velocities. And this is taking a slice out of our simulation here. And it's currently drawing it on our XY plane, which is convenient for us. And we can offset this. So we can move through the fluid, taking a slice sample. And then the trails are essentially an interpolated um, line that is taking into account multiple voxels, multiple velocities along those voxels. We can increase the length of that, decrease the length until it's just a simple one voxel. And that's much more like our velocity display that we had before. Like so, the default is 20, which looks quite good. And then we can change the plane, of course. Like I said, we can change it to the XZ, which is, there we go, on the that plane. And then the offset works vertically then along Y, like so. Let's put it back to the default. Now we can set it to voxels. That's just going to be extremely dense. We're just going to see the entire simulation all at once. Not particularly useful if you have a, a really dense simulation, but uh, if we reduce the length down, it would be a bit clearer. So I'm just going to leave it on XY plane. Uh, we also have just show the trails only. So it'll actually turn the fluid off and we can just review just the trails. Uh, we also have um, trail color. So we can actually custom color. Um, currently it's taking it from the fuel and smoke channel or whichever channel is active. So you can see just smoke, just fuel, and you'll see a representation of it down there. Or temperature, of course, looks really good. And as I play, these obviously evolve and they look really cool. And you'll notice they are within the adaptive bounds. So if we wanted to have this looking a bit more stable, we would, would turn our adaptive bounds off. But for now, this is just for analyzing our fluid, for reviewing and understanding where the vorticing is going on, where the motion is in our fluid. And it's really useful, uh, a, a useful way to review things here. Okay, so that's our trails display. And in fact, I should actually turn them off whilst we're here. Go back to our default of fuel and smoke. And what we want to look at now is we want to look at the coloring. How do we control the look of our fluid? So if I hit play, you can see, of course, we have our smoke and our fuel. We'll focus on the fuel for a minute. In fact, I'm going to go back to the beginning and let's have a look at just where there's, there's quite a bit of fuel. Like here, that's quite nice. I'll just view that on its own. So I'm just going to view the fuel. 
And you can see here we have a color mode. Now the color mode is either black body or manual. We'll get to manual in a second, but black body, essentially it's a, a physical property. It's a physical phenomena where you heat something up and it goes through a gradient of color. It starts to emit light, starts to give off photons and they have different wavelengths. So the wavelengths give off different colors. So we start off with nothing because it's not at the right temperature. As it gets hotter and hotter, it goes through the reds, the yellows, and then eventually it becomes white hot, and then all the way through until eventually it can actually get sort of bluing, sort of blue colors, where it's extremely, extremely hot. So we're dealing with a, a flame here, or a representation of burning fuel. So our temperature range currently is between 300 and 4,000 Kelvin. And what we can do, we can actually change those ranges to change the look of our fluid. So if our minimum temperature is 2000 Kelvin, which is still quite hot, very hot in fact, um, you can see we're getting a white hot flame. And if I reduce it all the way down to zero, where essentially it'll have more black at this end of the gradient, it looks a lot less aggressive, a lot less uh, high temperature. Um, and if I lower the max temperature, you can see it goes all the way through until eventually we're just getting just the, uh, the fuel itself and perhaps it's unburnt at that point. So let me reset those two back to their defaults. We also have this power. Now power, we can think of a little bit as a smoothing mode. So it's about basically how much of the black body we are sampling and how strong the uh, emission is. So you can see here, we're, we're making it a bit of a, a shorter gradient. And that might, uh, generally, if you go lower, you're gonna see more reds along the fringes there. So like so. Okay, so the other mode, like I said, is manual. And manual mode gives us a custom gradient. So we can actually customize our fuel here. And if I just open up that fuel gradient, we can change these colors to anything we like. So we could have a blue flame perhaps like so. And a trick I actually like to use here, and I think it'd be useful to know, is that if you just have one color at the end here, you can actually overdrive gradients in Cinema 4D. So we can actually set this brightness value on the knot to over 100%. So if I go to 200, you'll start to see it gets brighter. If I go to 500, you'll see we get a gradient that is really nice and it has a really hot end. Then it causes this kind of uh, more aquary color there and then it goes to the blue. And we get a much nicer looking sort of magical flame if you like, or perhaps it's burning something different. Now, having control over this is really nice. You can actually set exactly where you want certain colors and you can obviously have multiple colors in the same, um, gradient like so and that's obviously mixing with our blue and you can see we're getting sort of a pink resulting color now i'm going to reset that to default and take a look at the fuel opacity now it, this is active in both modes so if i go back to our black body mode you can see we have it here this gradient is essentially telling the slice each slice of our simulation here where the fuel should be displayed so what I mean by that is that if the fuel is at one inside a voxel, this end of the gradient is that one. And at zero, it's going to use this end. Now this gradient is based on brightness values. So you can see here we've got a sort of a brighter one than the other two. And essentially, if I increase the brightness of that one, you'll see the opacity becomes much higher of our on our um, fuel in the viewport here. So we have a knot here that's actually black. So essentially it's saying that if there's 100% fuel in the voxel or there's a high fuel uh, in that voxel to not display it. So essentially we are creating like a hollowed out fire. And that's actually representative of, say you've got a gas burning and then the gas is not igniting until it reaches a higher temperature and you actually get this kind of transparent core. Okay, so I'm gonna reset that back to its default. And let's take a look at smoke. Now smoke is very similar to the fire that we just looked at. It's based on the same principle. The amount of smoke in each voxel is represented on this gradient. So no smoke at, uh, at this end and then full smoke at the other end. So at the moment we have this default set up where we have just a sort of to create a gray smoky looking gradient, uh, a volume even. And then we can actually move those and you can see we can actually overbright them have it much more white. So if, you, if you've got steam, perhaps you're gonna want something that's in all one color essentially. And then we can increase the transparency like so. Remember, this is not changing our simulation. This is simply changing the representation of it in our viewport here. 
So the render engine, when you come to rendering things, that will differ as well. But this is a great way of reviewing and getting a, a look dialed in. So I'm going to change that gradient to something more exotic. I'm going to go to load preset and I'm going to grab this multicolored. It's actually the same one we use for temperature. I can invert it and you can see we have this um, rather exotic looking smoke now. And we can use our opacity to clip that. If we want some smoother, softer looking smoke, we can use that. Or if we want to clip it and just have it in very sort of specific areas, we can use that opacity in the same fashion. Okay, and as I move these gradients, different parts of that operate the same way. And this is exactly the same. Let's reset that to default. Uh, this is exactly the same as the temperature. Uh, we have control over where this is placed. And you can see as I move this blue knot through, it actually passes through the volume at different temperatures. Same with the speed, as I showed earlier. Uh, the, if I use a, a different gradient here, so let's load in that one with the blues in it, you'll see now blue is the zero speed and red is the, the, the fastest. Um, but we can actually change that range. So if I use the opacity to just clip, so essentially anything that's zero, uh, I mean, at this point, it would be, it's about 80%. So anything below, what, 40 units per second is not going to display at all. So we can clip that right down until we're just seeing the fastest velocities. And like always, these are all active, like they will render every frame. And we get a good analysis of our simulation. So these are the fastest parts of our simulation. And we know the red parts are 200 units or above. So if I increase this to say 500, you'll see uh, both our opacity and our colors change there. But we're getting more of a range of the speeds. So we're definitely getting speeds up to 100, just about, uh, sorry, up to 500, just about. And then the lower speeds, we're definitely getting zero speeds on the outside here. Okay, so that is the display modes for exposure effects. They're really important for analyzing your simulation, getting a better understanding of what is contained within those voxels, and it'll help you be able to develop your simulation via a tweak and review process.